So this evening we're here to talk to you about the budget. Um, with me is Deputy Cutting, and we appreciate the opportunity to come and sit in front of you. Uh, this budget has been prepared and reviewed by the town manager and assistant town, uh, deputy town manager. Um, we've gone through some of the line items and the, the areas that are impacted by, by what we've proposed. Um, I would like to open up to you. How would you like to do this? Would you like to do it in block format? Would you like to do it at baseline? It's completely up to you. Whatever, how you prefer it. Sure. So I think that block format will be easiest. Perfect. Um, I am going to have to, unfortunately, show my age here a little bit. There's been some changes that have happened in life as I hit 47 years old. So uh, currently we are coming to see you, and I will give you the bottom line so that we can work backwards. Um, the proposed budget is going to be for $3,803,596. Uh, what you will see in there is, generally speaking, most of the um, wage items that are all contractually obligated have remained s static. Um, there are hard changes when it comes to overtime. In the administration line items, uh, very little changes. There are some that stand out as high percentage items, but they're very small numbers as a result of that. When it comes to the regular wages and all of those items, that's contractual obligations. Um, holiday pay, also contractual obligations. You'll notice that we have um, staff development that's gone up by approximately uh, a couple of hundred dollars as a result of increased costs for uh, memberships. Um, otherwise, they've remained pretty static. We have seen an increase in, and if you recall, we had a uh, new copier. We purchased that approximately three years ago. The servicing of that has gone up in cost, and so that, that cost is reflected here. Do you have any questions on administration? That total is $402,818. Okay, any questions? Yep. Can we go through the whole thing and then have the questions? or However you you'd like to wait. Sir. I'm here for you. Yeah. Okay. So on fire suppression, you'll see that uh, in total, we see $2,751,233. There have been some changes after the submission of the budget that uh, cut some of the overtime line items. Um, the OT callback was cut from 15000 to 13000 The sick leave um, coverage was cut down to 50000 Vacation remains the same. And um, I do believe that's it as far as wage items. There is a small increase when it comes to fireworks details. Um, when it comes to the two line items that are cut, that those were done throughout the process, you'll see a negative uh, number there in career incentives. This is a location where our stipends come from, and annually at, at around Thanksgiving, in or around the third week of November, we transfer money from the EMS fund to this budget that covers the cost of all the stipends for paramedics, AEMTs, and all the training. Um, protective clothing, we are um, putting in there, as you know, we were uh, greatly serviced by the communities uh, this year that when they voted to assist us in purchasing a second set of gear. Uh, that was designed to get us a second set of gear and other uh, protective equipment. However, we still have brake fix problems. When somebody tears their pants or if a coat goes out of service for whatever reason, we need to fix that. Um, technical hazard spent, uh, expense has been reduced to $10,000. And there's a couple, there's two other major changes here. One of which was new equipment, it's coming in at zero, and uh, replacement equipment coming in at $8,000. So, like I said, $2,751,233. For fire prevention, regular wages, part-time wages, and OT wages, uh, they all remain static except the OT wages. They're, they're reduced um, based on the five-year moving average. Supplies and expenses is a major cut um, to, to a total of 4000 but that's also based on the five-year expense. And uh, no new equipment is listed for them. However, I can tell you that under the capital improvement plan, we are looking for a fire prevention vehicle, and that will be part of that process. Uh, training. We have, training it also includes medical and uh, recruitment. So medical services remains unchanged. The new equipment remains unchanged. And for training and recruitment, we're requesting $35,503, which is um, on par with last year's budget request. For communications, um, essentially unchanged. There's a zero line item and replacement equipment. I'll explain that at the end. Uh, the total there is $268,134. For repair services, this is uh, the account that we use for vehicle maintenance and all of the transit of the vehicles. So none of our repairs are done in Hampton because we need qualified mechanics and pump operators and to, uh, to service these pumps. We transport them to the facilities that can do that. One's in Walpole, one's in Vassalboro, Maine. So we have $1,500 and $125,650 for a total of 127150 
And for the fire stations and buildings, you'll notice that there are some changes that are uh, built into it. Um, with the electric and heating fuel, these are based on experience rates as to what we've used for utility costs. Um, you'll see that the building maintenance has gone down. There's, um, there's been a lot of maintenance that has occurred recently, and we can talk about that. And then uh, a reduction in pair maintenance currently, and as I told you last year when we were here at budget time, we're still looking for a company to come in and paint the shed that's located on the state pier. Uh, finding a company that's willing and able to do that over the water has been a challenge, but we are working on that and hope to complete that by the end of this year. All right, so that brings us to the total, I believe, right? For that line end building of the stations is 107,775, which brings us again to our total of $3,803,596. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Mr. Waddell. Uh, yeah. How do you feel about this budget? I feel that we're going to provide you the best service possible. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we good, do that. good answer. Good answer. Uh, I see under a couple of things, like I see gasoline under administration. Yes, sir. Cut by 27%. So between the gasoline and diesel items, um, that's, that's somewhat of a moving target as um, the, at the entire town level, they're trying to set that price. We use a WEX system, WEX Express. So with that, we're all using a card, and uh, those numbers aren't usually finalized until later on in the process as a result of market value at the time. Okay. So right. this isn't something that I've placed in the budget. This is something that we work on together uh, collaboratively, and so at the end of the cycle, then they're going to set the, the price based on gallons per. Okay. Technical hazards expenses. Yes, sir. Down by 29%? Yes, sir. This is a uh, significant... Um, area where we have uh, our start assessment is located in there that costs seven thousand two hundred and fifty dollars um, we're part of a community uh, one of our regional collaboratives with mutual aid we have a start um, team that will respond for any hazardous materials <coughs> releases in the area so that's our stipend for that is seven thousand two hundred and fifty dollars um, there is some items in there that were placed in for updates and and changes um, we're right now in the process of evaluating um, four gas meters, uh, the one on the ladder died, and so did the hydrogen cyanide meter. So we're looking at prices to, to move forward with that. Um, so there, there will be some areas that we're going to have to adjust. Okay. All right. Uh, <clears throat> new equipment. Yes, sir. Minus 54%. And you're talking about 7,400, is that correct? Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm looking at two yeah. different sheets. So what we had put in there initially was a $4,000 line item for um, nozzles. Uh, as you recall, I came before you guys probably two and three years ago to request hose, and that's inch and three-quarter hose line, which is our hand lines. Um, we went with the Mercedes product, and that's not Mercedes like the vehicle. That's the, the name brand for the product. Um, <laughs> they came out and were tested and were a superior product all around. Uh, right now, what we're looking to do is upgrade our nozzles as well because at the end of the day, some of them are greater than 20 years old, some of them uh, up to 30 years old. Mr. Chairman? Right, but you had a big... Why is that not being telecast? What's the matter? Well, the public wants to see this. This is budget. That's where's, where's the? Okay. That's that's when they put on the uh, things from the computer. Yeah. We're still what? being telecast. Yeah, it's still being telecast. Okay. Thank there you. We are continuing. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, but y y it's down 54 percent. So the primary driver of that is going to be that line item. Oh, um, sorry. It, uh, yeah. So there, there's other items we're just going to have to adjust within that line now. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. And OT under fire prevention down 62%. Right. Now Based how are we on doing that? Well, um, you know that our fire prevention officer is responsible for fire investigations. Yeah. He's also responsible for the safety aspect and inspections at the uh, fireworks displays. Um, over the course of five years, this has been the average, so this has been reduced to that level. All right. So you've done a lot of the five-year average? Correct. Yeah. At, at, the, at the town level, the entire town has done that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know that. Yep. yep. And uh, when it comes to overtime, um, it's, that's difficult not to crack sometimes because you're looking at a moving target. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm wondering. That's why I'm wondering what, right. how you can say about cutting that much when it is a moving target. So, so when it comes to fire prevention, that's a less of a moving target than the, the greater suppression force. Um, currently, as you would imagine, you know, uh, we're, we're looking at sick time, vacation, and OT callback for fires. 
Um, with our sick time this year right now, we're overspent on that particular line item. We've also had five people out for a significant amount of time. When we look at last year's budget, we only had one person out for one month as a result of an injury. Uh, this year we've had, we had one firefighter that was absent for a total of five months uh, as a result of an injury, um, two other people for six and seven weeks at a time. You have to be 100% to fight fires, you just do. And so their return is imperative, but it's also they have to return healthy. Um, so when they're out for that length of time, it's something that you can't, you, you hope against, but you also understand that you can't plan for every eventuality. So this year we've had a lot of open positions as a result of that. We also, last year if you recall, we did not have any vacancies. We were fully staffed. Um, in December, uh, the deputy retired, and then we also had a firefighter do a lateral transfer to Pelham. And in doing so, he created a vacancy, and I believe his vacancy date started January 3rd of this year. So from January 3rd throughout till we hired uh, firefighter Matt Brillard on May 6th, uh, we had a vacancy in an open position. And then upon the promotions of Deputy Cutting, Captain Gannon, and Lieutenant Frost, we created another firefighter vacancy. We're in the process of filling that right now. We've got 19 applications, if you're interested, um, if anybody wants to be a firefighter. So uh, with that process, we've got 19 applications that we're reviewing for that position, but it's still currently vacant. As I talked to you a year ago, um, we, we did the same thing this summer where we staffed up to nine, and I've talked about running down to eight. Um, last year, because of no injuries and because of the situation as it stood and the conditions at the time, we were able to maintain from June 15th through uh, Veterans Day with maintaining nine. This year, as a result of the fact that we've had multiple injuries and a vacancy, we had to stop the ninth person from coming in at Labor Day. Mm -hmm. So we're unable to continue that staffing to nine as we did last year. Okay. You know, so your, your overall increase is 1.07%? That's correct, sir. Okay, which is not very much. Correct. Not very much. I mean, and I agree 100% that we have to get a budget passed, but I want to make sure that we're passing a budget that's a realistic budget that, that we can really provide the services that we need to provide. So that's, that's my statement right now. Thank you, sir. Rusty? Yeah, I, I see a couple of things, and, and one is similar to Jim, is one is the, uh, the OT wages. I mean, uh, the five-year average, is, and you've got less now than you, what you want, and that, that's a little concerning to me. Uh, the, uh, the sick leave coverage, like you said, you've, you've actually spent 64000 this year, and you're only at 50000 That's $14,000 difference. Now, granted, yet last year was the year Last before. year was a good year. Last year was a good year. Yes, sir. This year hasn't been quite so good. Correct. And so, in that five-year average, too, remember, we had, some, we had a, a few people that had um, two with shoulder surgeries, one with a knee surgery. They were out uh, an extended period as a result. Right. Right. Yeah, I get that. Yep. So that's why I, that that's concerning to me. Yes, sir. Is dropping it that low. Um, uh, incident costs. No, no, the below that protective clothing. Now you've you've dropped that down from what you requested to what the town manager did, which was about I don't know fourteen hundred dollars or so. Yes, sir. Uh, we did have the new gear this year, so we did. Uh, do you feel comfortable with that number? I do. Okay. Uh, technical hazard expense. Yes, sir. Um, you had requested twenty-one thousand, and and we have that at ten. Does that include uh, physicals for the uh, the start guys? Uh, that's paid for by the start team. So part of our seven thousand two hundred and fifty dollars um, fee to them pays for their physicals. So anything that happens with the with the with the members of the department that are part of the start team, if they go for a physical, if they go for training, if they go for a response they will submit a work report under our normal standard payroll and then that money is then um, is obtained through a request to the start board and they reimburse. Okay. I just want to make sure that we had that, you know, we've had some problems in the past with, with some of our firefighters that have gotten sick and want to make sure they're it. still well covered. Yes, sir. So, uh, and uh, fight up, uh, replacement equipment. Yes, sir. Um, you know, your request was 14-4. Uh, the town manager has committed eight, and I understand why we're doing this. Uh, however, uh, as you said, some of our equipment's old. Uh, I did notice that the other day the ladder truck, the, the tip on the gun has a two-and-a-half-inch bore on it. 
and there weren't any stack tips on it. And I we guess do have those. We do have those. Do. Okay. Yeah. As a matter of fact, that solid bore that you see is a, is a new <coughs> device, probably within the last eighteen months. Okay. Well, that's, that's just what you know. Stuff like that, I'm looking at absolutely and, and, and seeing. You know, uh, equipment does wear out. It does. You know, and, and since you're talking about the ladder truck, we've identified that there's going to be some repairs that are necessary. Um, UL comes in and tests our ladders, and that's ground ladders and the ladder truck. Uh, on testing this time, it did not pass certification. It's still a very safe vehicle. We're not concerned about that. However, they identified several areas of rust on the frame, which I've been before you before to discuss rust on the frame. Mm. Um, we've had an evaluation by one company right now. We're looking to get a couple more. Uh, one other area is a minor small rusting on the actual ladder itself. You know that we've had the, the, the entire vehicle painted, but on the ladder, there's one area that they said that we need to sandblast and paint. Um, it's a minor concern. But it's still, the, the costs that we've gotten the, the quote for right now are still $12,000. So minor concerns on a multi-million dollar truck, you know, they, they add up. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, so going down to uh, the, the station maintenance. Yes, sir. Uh, electric. Um, the actual this year was only 18. Of course, it's going to be a little bit more. So far. Right. So far. That's the end of August. So. Right. So... Uh, where, where the budget was 39, uh, it'd be nice to hear what we are as we get closer, what yep. that number actually is. Yep, so as we, we close can, it on for sure. And the same with the, with the, the heating and, and all the other stuff, because again, this was a couple months ago, right? and we, we're coming into that. So, um, And it was gorgeous today, but was, Friday but, night. Yeah, Friday <laughs> night was pretty cool. Yes. So uh, <coughs> that's all I get for now, I guess, looking Thanks, at sir. first glance. Okay, Mrs. Wolseley. Chief, what's the balance left now on the turnout gear article? What have you got as a little nest egg after you've bought the... So I believe Thank that you for the chart showing everybody getting new gear. Indeed. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. And thank <laughs> the voters. Um, I believe that for, in total, all of the new gear, if I'm not mistaken, was $130,000. It was, it was somewhere in the, in the near term of $138,000. Um, okay, so and that was jackets, pants, boots, gloves, and hoods. There were, not no, there were no helmets purchased through that at this time. Um, helmets are a durable good that's able to be washed. We're looking at replacing helmets in the future that will have removable um, structures like uh, suspension systems in the, in the headband. So. But the purpose of that turnout gear article is so that you have a reserve every year. That's so correct. what are you intending to propose this year to be added to that so account? So that's going to um, okay, come from the town manager bit, as well. You want to you want to do that every single year. That's right. And and Mr. Welch has been instrumental in this. Um, so in moving forward with that, there's proposed there's going to be a mr welch should feel help me i think that twenty five thousand for a warrant article addition i believe it's twenty seven five there because there was an increase in the cost right so that at the end of the the time when our primary gear comes of age and needs to be replaced there'll be enough there to be able to do that so you're saying you've got a hundred and thirty eight thousand now spent a hundred and thirty then what i'm asking you is what's there's, left yeah what's there's probably left? about sixty thousand in there right now sixty thousand yep so you want to piggyback Twenty-seven five right. on that sixty thousand. There are some changes coming as well. Um, that was the Warren article also included other personal protective equipment. Yes. To that end, um, we are looking at. Uh, I believe our wetsuits are coming up on four or five years, yes. so they're going to need replacement shortly. And uh, we've just purchased nine dry suits, but there's only nine. We haven't purchased any other dry suits. So at this time, it's not an individual thing. There, there, there's only nine of them. Yeah, adding twenty seven five, I don't know, to that sixty thousand. And you have That's over time. And <coughs> now you have two positions that you're gonna to try to fill, if I recall what you said, next year. So that you gotta There's need one this year. Huh? There's one this year. I thought you were talking about having two and having them do the the same class together. You know, That's putting them through paramedicine. You're talking paramedicine. Yeah. So paramedicine, the EMTs, right, which is schooling. But they're, but they're new hires. They're not just EMTs. Yeah. They're firefighters, nope. aren't they? They are firefighters. Well, but they're also going to school to be paramedics. They're currently advanced. But EMTs. they're going to need clothing, is what what my concern is right now. They're going to need turnout gear. Not they're for that. There. That's EMS. So it's a different side of the house. So firefighter turnout gear. That's yeah. for firefighting. 
for EMS, oh. it, we're dressed like this. Oh, so you're not going to let them go to any fires? They'll go to fires, but they'll have turnout gear. It's a separate. It's a separate part of the same job. These were also incumbent employees. They're already are employed, right? right? Correct. It's not no employees, right? No. They're already employees that are there. I thought you were two men short. We're one right now. One man short. Right. They're two <laughs> paramedics short. What they're going to do is send two of the firefighters to paramedic school. Okay. <coughs> right. Reset. Okay. That's I just all. want to make sure I yep. understand what you're doing because we yep. want to keep enough money. We do, and, and you know now, especially be, because of the safety aspect of it, um, a new hire will require two sets of gear, not just one. Yeah, and because when I'm looking in, okay, so you don't have two additional positions, you have one. Correct, right now. Okay, and then I did, as I read some of this, here it is, turnout boots, gloves, protective <laughs> hoods, uh, second set for all firefighters, et cetera. So, so that second set, you'll see that line item has been zeroed. Wait a minute. Okay, that's the bottom. Right. So um, but not, not to think of, of them as consumables, but boots, hoods, and gloves, yeah. they're the most um, likely to get damaged because yes. they're exposure. You know, you're walking on nails, you're, you're pulling sharp objects, yes. whatever it might be. So that's why we have that particular line item in there to be able to replace them. Okay. So that, that remains right. in the budget as opposed to the, that's the separate. In the, that's in the budget, not the special Correct. article. That's right. Because I was as a, wondering as a why fix, you had that in there, why you couldn't draw down. Then we would come to see you on a on a accounting basis. We would need to request permission to use it, other than the second set of gear. It's my understanding. Yeah. So this way here, we're able to just go ahead and fix what we need to without having to have uh, wait for a board meeting to do it. Okay. Well, I just don't want to see yep. what we saw this past year right. with people with old stuff and not having proper gear and and whatever issued. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna keep contributing to that Warren article. That's the intention. Yes, ma'am. All right. Because otherwise, I'll growl. Okay. Um, <laughs> I've seen okay. you do it. Okay. Fireworks, I'm on page 48. Okay. Fireworks detail wages. Is the town responsible for that? I don't remember. Yes, that was a vote of the Board of Selectmen, I believe, three years ago. Um, okay. One year we used the 26 fund as a result of a collaboration uh, with all the departments, including mm -hmm. the town manager's office. Yeah. Uh, and it was taken at the board of selectmen level. It was voted to be part of the fire department. Budget. So fire and police, Fred, will both be responsible because you're going to have fire and police details at the fire fireworks too, as well, right? That was the board's order. Okay. Uh, well, I'm just I'm just fishing. What about the uh, horn? Uh, after the uh, problem with the water and the boil order and the whatever that went around the town, I understand the horn is in disrepair. Can we get back? Do you have any idea what it would cost to get that horn back in service so you could at least have a couple of opportunities if there is a working fire especially or some you, kind of You're emergency? talking about the recall horn? Yeah. That hasn't been in service in my time in Hampton. I understand that. And to be honest with you, with the amount of firefighters that live out of town, yeah. what we've done, if you recall, we, we received an AFG grant in 2018, and it was 2017 AFG money. Um, we purchased uh, 40 pagers, which are all the top of the line Minotaur 6 pagers, and we've issued one to every firefighter. But I'm thinking of the old days when the horn would blow, I think it was twice, and everybody knew because you didn't right. have to telephone and you didn't have to do email and you didn't have to do any of that stuff. You could hear all over the town that there was a working fire. A lot of people not only lived in town, though, they might have worked their other job in town, so they were able to respond from there. Right now, that's not the case. Well. I appreciate the question, though. I kind of like to see that nice horn back in service. Um, wait a minute, because I'm getting through here. So you are going to be sending one new. See, the chief wants you to ho sound the horn too. So no, he's actually <laughs> tipping me off because um, there's there's a program that the um, that both departments yes. and also EOC and I believe town manager will have the option too. Uh, it's called Code Red, which is similar, if I'm not mistaken, to a reverse 911. If people opt for it, they'll be able to receive alerts um, through their you know whatever device oh. that they choose. Uh, whether it's a message on their phone or a, um, a phone call, there's going to be a, a push service that will come out to them. And we're still in the process of that paperwork. We just signed this week. We just signed all of this week. I'm hoping to have that up and 
place maybe by the end of the year. Now, what's the dollar value here? Do we have? Is that going to inquire? We pay nothing. No, separate. Okay. And you're going to let Aquarian know when you get this all set up in case they have a boil yeah, order? Have They'll be given a point of contact within the town, probably the emergency management director, whoever that is, for that contact, the board will get put out to the emergency management office at that point. Okay. Now, for, for training and recruitment here. Yes, ma'am. You've got, well, I've got a total of 51,953. So that's going to be, that's going to include one new hire and one existing firefighter, both of whom will be going so, to the EMT I, training. I, I'd like to just say for a minute that we're looking at 35,503, not, I mean, sorry, 39,970. What page are you on? Um, I'm on 50, yeah. let me back up. Yeah, I'm with you. Okay. I'm looking at the town manager's. Because um, I've scribbled questions right. on the. But if you if you look at the submitted budget after the town manager review, you'll see that that particular line item is thirty nine thousand nine hundred seventy eight. But what page are you on? Uh, I'm on page two of the of the landscape version of the budget. Oh well, that's no good. I've got this stuff in here. Okay. Okay. So there were there were cuts made to that particular line item. Um, one of them was a technical rescue um, group level training. We had looked to um, potentially move forward with a, with a technical rescue course, mm -hmm. uh, as I've come to you before and talked about live yep. fire training. Yep. This, is, this would have been trench rescue. Okay. But now, I think the last time I asked, you told me that we, when we put the uh, new hire firefighter through the EMT training course, that we can't have him sign anything saying that because we've paid his tuition, that uh, he has to stay with Hampton for five years or whatever. You told me you couldn't do that. Right, we can't do that, and we only select firefighters to come in that already have the, the at least that minimum level of training. Um, currently, we're <coughs> using advanced EMT level. So they've already got the basic level coming in and advanced level upon their hire. So these are going, so what, so what specifically are they going in for this spring? Paramedicine. Paramedics. I know, but paramedics. That, that's, a, that's another level of training. Of EMT. Correct. Okay. All right. There are three levels. I just want to make sure yep. we we getting stuff. Have the unions now merged into just two six six four? They retain two collective bargaining units, so yeah. there'll still be two contracts, but they are under one. Um, They're under one roof now. Correct, but there's still two separate collective bargaining units, so there's still two six six four and thirty seventeen. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, I made notes, so, I, oh, okay, I think that's it. I ran, okay, I ran Regina. out. Yeah, I just have a couple questions. They're all under fire suppression. Okay. So, overtime wages, yes, we have, as of uh, 831, the balance is 146606 Yes, ma'am. And we're budgeting for 195000 So, you're confident that that is going to be... I am, and if you recall too, when we were discussing the live fire, I believe you were still on the board at the time when we were discussing live fire training, there was a question about the live fire training item that I had had in the equipment, whether or not it included the wages. We had moved those wages up to that, and that's what that reflects. So okay, that perfect. we would have at least one group level training per year in the wage line item where it belongs. Um, this year, we were very fortunate because we had two group level trainings that were also the result of um, grants. So we had active shooter in May, May 11th, I believe, where each group member ran through that um, active shooter hostile emergency response. And then in July, if you'll recall, we also received a grant from the Department of Safety, which was rescue swimmer, rescue boat operator. So that was just very fortunate. We're going to continue to work to try to get grants for Great. training. But at this time, that's, that's what we're putting forward. All right. And thank you for the... Uh We've received some awesome emails as far as the working fire, so thank, thank you. Ma I appreciate that Absolutely. very much. And thanks, Chief uh, Sawyer, for yeah. the Yes, I one. appreciate um, the cuts that you've made, and I mm -hmm. uh, agree with the things that you've asked for. Thank you, sir. You're not finished? No, I just have a couple. I just wanted, because you brought up the fire, I wanted to bring that up. But uh, vacation coverage. Yes, ma'am. As of 831, it's 195000 and we're budgeting 200000 So as you might imagine, we're, we're working with 
the, the budget line is as, as good as possible. When we did maintain nine person staffing, if somebody took a vacation, we were covering. Uh, there's a quarter left of the year. Right now, um, we're getting our October financials. I'll be able to have a better idea in another week or so uh, where we stand. But as it stands right now, we're, we're right at the end. Okay, and my last question yes, is under fireworks detail wages. We yep. are budgeting 8,000, but we've spent nothing as of 731. And actually, uh, I don't know if I looked at that for 831, but. Is so that the, the, this is that's just not an accurate number. Uh, we had okay. 13, I believe, 13 shoots so far this year. We still have uh, uh, one more shoot coming up on New Year's Eve, and the, all of the wage line item from that the, the, they're attributed to this line. Okay, perfect. So that's Thank a you. firefighter salary for that. Um, you know that I've talked to you about Bill mm -hmm. Payne's firefighter uh, fire inspections, right? When he goes down there to look at that, that comes out of so, um, okay. prevention. All right. Thank yeah. you. And I appreciate that you both came in this evening, and you, I appreciate the leadership of both of you. Rusty? Yeah, I got, since, since uh, Mary Louise brought up the training, I know you got, you said you had 19 people taking the, the test right now. Or we have 19 applicants for the open position. Okay. Yeah. I, so. I, 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 I'm knowing what we used to do, we used to have, we used to run a list that was good for a yeah. couple of years. Yeah. Yes. And, and hopefully when, <laughs> when you run that list, we can look at that. I agree. Um, one of the things that we discussed actually today was the fact that we're, we're looking to hire qualified, competent candidates. Um, historically, we have, in the past, we've had a large volume of qualified, competent candidates. Um, recently, we've had some people come in that just did not meet the minimum standards, yeah. and they were called at the, at the resume level or at the oral board level, mm -hmm. and they didn't come up to, to the level of fire chief interview. Um, there's only actually the last, the last uh, time we did this, there was only two that went to the fire chief level. One had already been interviewed and the other one took a position in another department. And that's why we had to open it up again. So um, right now, there are numerous departments that have vacancies, several vacancies. Um, Salem just hired eight, I believe. Londonderry has a, has a safer grant that allows, they're looking for four. Goffstown is looking for four uh, as a result of a safer grant. So there's a, uh, Portsmouth is looking to put on four with an additional two for retirement. Um, there's just an open field right now. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we're looking at a narrow list of candidates and the most attractive offer wins. So. Thank okay. you again. Oh, Absolutely. Oh, I have a quick. Yes. Are you um, having your computers screened at reasonable intervals? make sure that there is no contamination on the site so uh, we're part of the town IT department mm -hmm. um, and so I know that Paul and Dylan do a tremendous job of mm -hmm. with the firewall as well as with the, the constant screening right. um, we get updates every Thursdays and, oh, and they take care of business so that's customers. incorporated in your routine uh, in uh, their routine right in their routine yep. that's benefiting you correct because you know there's not no problem now if we here. purchase a computer um, which yeah. we have done. Yeah. Um, we we purchase it under the fire department budget, but they will maintain it. Yeah. And then we've done the same thing with the iPads, which we're using in the ambulances, and they're they're obviously all um, going through the firewall, so okay. we're maintaining it that way. So if we put a picture of yourself and the deputy in a couple of the statewide newspapers, you might attract more applicants. Put his smiling face. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank for you so much. Have a great night.